Eligibility can make or break your KCT journey. One wrong assumption and your whole year is wasted. So in this video, we are going to talk in detail about the academic eligibility for KSET 2026 examination. So please watch the complete video, understand it so that you don't uh, waste your one year and you should know how much marks you need to secure so that you are eligible for KSET examination. What are the conditions for that and what are the conditions for rank determination? that also will be talking in today's video so let's start from here academic eligibility the basic three points are there that you should be knowing that no candidate shall be as eligible for admission to government seats unless he is a citizen of India so everybody who are appearing for case examination must be a citizen of India second the candidates who have passed the qualifying examinations other than the universities listed in the notification at VTU website are not eligible and the candidates who have passed Karnataka State Open University are also not eligible. So your 12th is should be from those institutes which is recognized by the VTU okay and if you are from Open University then also you are not eligible please remember this. Third is a candidate who is expecting the qualifying examination results in the second PUC or 12th standard in 2026 may apply and appear for the common entrance test 2026 but he or she shall not be eligible for admission to any of the courts if he or she does not pass the qualifying examination with the required pass marks of percentage. So, if you are not fulfilling the basic criteria of qualifying examination means how much marks you should get in your 12th examination so that you are eligible for KSET. If you are not um, uh, meeting that criteria then you may write the KSET examination but you will not be eligible for admission to the colleges. Okay? So what is that basic criteria how much percentage is required in the 12th mark that is very very important. Okay? So let us see that in the next section. So now let us see the engineering and technology courses eligibility for 12th examination. Okay? What should be your marks in the 12th class or PU2 board examination. There are other criteria for other courses but I have taken solely here for engineering if you are interested for any other course do comment me down I will give you the uh, idea or I will make a video on that also. So first of all if I talk about this one for engineering we have uh, first thing passed in second PUC 12th standard or equivalent examination with English as one of the languages and obtained a minimum of 45 percent of marks in aggregate in physics and maths along with chemistry, biotechnology, biology, electronics or computer. 40 percent for SC, ST category 1, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B category candidates. Okay? So, you should be having your uh, second PUC or 12th standard or any other equivalent exams as English should be there, maths and physics should be there. Okay? Apart from this, you can have either chemistry, biotechnology, biology, electronics or computer and the total aggregate percentage should not be less than 45 percent for general candidate students. It can be 40 percent for these category students. Okay? And how your rank will be determined by taking equal marks in equal proportions in the qualifying examinations and in the CET in PCM subjects. No minimum mark is prescribed in CET. So, there is no qualification marks for CET examination but your rank will be determined by taking 50 percent weightage from your PCM uh, in your board examination and 50 percent weightage from your KSET examination. Okay? Now, uh, there is and this one is given in detail in much more detail where chemistry will be calculated where not. So, I will be bringing out this to you in simple terms it is there in the 2025 information bulletin and we are predicting the same thing will remain for 26 also. So, if any new changes are come I will definitely update you but this is from 25 information bulletin. Okay? So, I will break down this into simple terms and I will explain you here. The first one is subject that you must study. So, as I have told you physics plus maths is compulsory. Okay? One more subject from any one of this, you can have chemistry, biology, biotechnology, electronics or computer science. You can have any one subject from here and English should also be a mandatory subject. 
Next, what is the marks needed for general candidate? 45% minimum in the optional subjects. So, including this optional subject, physics, maths, one optional subject and English, the minimum percentage should be 45%. And for SC, ST, OBC category 1 students, it should be 40% should be minimum. Now, if chemistry is too low, this is important. I will recommend that all of you should be having chemistry here. Why? Let me tell you. Then uh, if chemistry marks is too low, okay, so you are, uh, then what will happen? Then your marks in biology, biotechnology, electronics or computer science can be used only to check the eligibility. For example, uh, you have physics, chemistry, maths, okay, bio and English, okay. Now, suppose these are your subjects. If I add physics, chemistry, maths and English, your aggregate is not coming 45%. Okay, you are not getting aggregate 45%. So, in that case, what will happen? If your chemistry mark is too low, that can be replaced with bio marks. Okay, so and then if you are getting 45%, you will be eligible. Okay, so I hope you are getting this. Let me clear once again. Suppose, for example, you in your uh, 12th board, you have subjects physics, chemistry, maths, bio and English. Okay. So, we need that 45 percent aggregate should be there in these four subjects. But if your chemistry mark is very low and by adding these four subjects, you are not getting 45 percent, then that can be replaced with biology or any of these subjects. If you have taken computer science, electronics, anything that can be managed and then if you are meeting 45 percent aggregate, you will be eligible. Right. But here there is important thing but, but for the rank, chemistry will be considered not the replaced one. So, for determining your rank, as I said you, for rank determination, 50 percent weightage will be taken from KCT examination PCM for engineering and 50 percent will be taken from your board examination PCM. So, at that time when the rank is determined, your this low mark in chemistry only will be considered. This one will not be considered. Okay. So, low mark or higher mark, whatever you have got in the rank determination PCM only will be considered for engineering, engineering rank determination. Okay. Next, how your rank is made? So, your performance in physics, chemistry and maths will be checked in CT examination and in the qualifying examination. Both the marks are given equal weightage, 50-50 percentage. Then the engineering rank list is prepared and published. Okay. So, that is what you have to be very careful. Chemistry, although it can replace, you can get eligible if your mark is less here. In chemistry, you may be eligible. But again, if your chemistry marks are low, your rank will also come low. So, make sure that physics, maths and chemistry, you improve them, you put the best marks, best efforts in these three subjects. Okay. So, that is uh, all in this video students, academic eligibility, please remember 45 percent is required, do not deviate from here, at least minimum this much should be there, otherwise if you are getting very good marks in the case at examination also, but if you have neglected your boards, this minimum criteria you are not meeting, then you will not be eligible. Okay. So, that is all in this video. I hope this video was helpful and you have got a target now how much below 45 percent you will not be able to get a seat. So, please study accordingly and plan accordingly. Thank you and if you have any doubt, please put down in the comment section. For any other branch or any other stream also, if you want to know the eligibility, you can put down in the comment section. I will definitely make a video on that. Thank you and all the very best.